Hello everyone, it's Kevin, and welcome back to another tutorial. In this long form video, we'll be looking at Foundry. Now, Foundry is an Ethereum developer environment that works, of course, for Moonbeam, and it is remarkable for two main reasons. For one, it's extremely fast. Extremely fast in running tests, in compiling, in doing everything you need to do. So it's really fast, and secondly, you do everything in one language, and that's Solidity. So the fact that you can write your tests in Solidity, you can write your smart contract code, of course, in Solidity, you can do everything in Solidity is really, really cool. You don't need to switch to write your tests in JavaScript, uh, perhaps working with a language um, that you might not be as familiar with or anything like that. You can do everything in Solidity. Now, Foundry itself is written in Rust, uh, but that's the underlying uh, infrastructure of the application. You won't be writing any Rust uh, when you're working with Foundry. Everything you do is in Solidity. So we have a couple different tutorials on Foundry on the Moonbeam doc site. If you go to the tutorial section, we have a, a full end-to-end -end one, and that's the one that we're here today. We'll be loosely following this uh, within the workshop, but we also have a page, of course, underneath the builder section, underneath build, um, and then development uh, libraries. Now, that guide is a little bit more um, getting started a little bit quicker uh, in terms of introducing you to all the tools. Today, we wanna to go a bit more in depth. We wanna look uh, a bit more deeply at testing and deployment um, and take you through all the steps that you might take um, if you're writing and testing your smart contracts in Foundry. So of course, without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight to it. Um, so you will need to have, of course, uh, some Moonbase Alpha dev tokens. Um, don't worry about uh, the verification uh, Moonscan API right now. Um, you don't need that at the moment. Um, let's go ahead and get Foundry set up. So if you have Foundry installed, we can go ahead and go ahead and run this command. So let's head into terminal and we'll run forge init Foundry. Cool. And we can go ahead and change directories into Foundry. What's that done? Uh, what this has done is it has set up uh, our environment here. It's given us a bunch of different folders. It's given us a script, uh, an SRC, and a testing folder. We'll be looking at all of these. Um, it's also given us a uh, TOML file. So let's go ahead and actually open this up so we can see it a little bit better. Cool. So the TOML file, this is like your hardhat config.js. Uh, in your TOML file, uh, we'll be setting a couple different things here. We'll be setting uh, some of our RPC endpoints, the version of Solidity that we want to work with, uh, and we'll take care of that in just one second. So let's also install the uh, Open Zeppelin uh, contract library here. Um, that's just one single command. Now, if you already started making changes to now, if you already started making changes uh, to your uh, TOML file or to any other file within Foundry, um, you might get an error when you try to install the Open Zeppelin contracts here um, that you need to commit those changes uh, before you go ahead and try to install uh, something new. So all you need to do to fix that is add um, files and commit them, and you don't need to like push them anywhere. You can just keep them on your local machine. So if you get an error uh, when you're trying to install, that's likely um, what that would be, is that you've already made a change here and you need to commit that so that uh, Foundry has a clean slate in order to install um, whatever you'd like to install, such as the Open Zeppelin contracts. Okay, and so we've got a couple different placeholders here for our TOML file, so let's go ahead and copy those. We'll replace what's already here. So we've set our Solidity uh, compiler version here. We also have some RPC endpoints. Um, we will comment out the Etherscan uh, keys. We don't need to verify anything at the moment. Uh, for our Moonbeam RPC endpoints, so we've already got the RPC endpoint for Moonbase. If we want to put one in for Moonbeam, we can get that from the Moonbeam doc site here. Um, and you can get any of the public uh, Moonbeam API keys right here, or public uh, Moonbeam RPC endpoints. So let's go ahead and paste this in. We'll save it. And then we'll get started uh, putting together some smart contracts. So. Again, within this structure here, our smart contracts are going to live in the SRC folder. So let's head there and let's go ahead and create a mytoken.sol contract. So mytoken.sol here um, is a token that's going to do a couple different things, right? So we are going to, uh, with 
when we're deploying our my token, we are going to specify um, an initial supply of the token. And every time we uh, mint the token, we have a requirement here that uh, the user can mint uh, whatever they'd like as long as it's less than uh, one ethers worth of tokens. So let's go ahead and get our my token contract put together. Cool, so fairly simple contract, um, not too much to go over here, uh, but this is going to allow us to test a couple of different things. This require statement here um, is going to allow us a lot of flexibility to demonstrate how we can test smart contracts within Foundry. Um, when we deploy our contract, it's going to give the initial supply to the person that's doing the deploying of the contract. And we're calling it my token. You can change the name, you can name it whatever you'd like. That's fine as well. We're of course using the Open Zeppelin ERC20 standard. Um, that is um, the typical, typical standard. Open Zeppelin builds a lot of great contracts, and so they're a fantastic option, of course, to, to work with. So we don't need to compile anything just yet, um, but we do want to write a second smart contract here. Uh, and this container uh, smart contract is going to hold our tokens. So we are going to give it a capacity when we deploy it. And, you know, 1,000, 10,000, whatever you want it to be, we're going to define that capacity. And then based on that and based on how many tokens it has, it's going to either be unsatisfied, meaning it's got room, it's going to be full, meaning it's at capacity, or it's going to be overflowing, uh, meaning it's got too many tokens uh, to be able to, uh, to handle. So let's go ahead and copy this in to container.soul. Let's actually create it first. It's going to live in the same folder here as my token. Oops, and let's go ahead and copy the contents in here. So we're going to have a function to update the status of it based on uh, what its current state is. And of course, when we go ahead and uh, deploy it, um, the states are up here. Sorry, I was highlighting the wrong thing. States can be unsatisfied, full, or overflowing. When we deploy this contract, um, it's going to be matched to a particular token. Um, so we are going to deploy this at the same time that we are deploying our my token contract, and we're going to specify a capacity. Uh, cool. And we've got another function to ask if it's overflowing. So let's save it. That's about it. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started writing some tests. So we have a test folder, so let's head back to that. And let's go ahead and create a mytoken.t.soul. Now you noticed the nomenclature here is that for our test files, we're going to name them uh, the naming of the file .t.soul. For scripts, we're going to name those uh, the name of the script .s.soul. And then your Solidity smart contract is just a normal mytoken.soul. And here we can actually go ahead and kind of uh, walk through this step by step. So let's head to the test. Let's open up my token uh, We can copy the first couple bits here. We've got our pragma statement. Um, we've got the my token that we're importing, and we are also importing uh, the forge standard uh, test .sol. This comes with a bunch of different. Um, assertions that we can use. It comes with a bunch of different uh, standard uh, test libraries that are going to be helpful um, for us in order to do our tests. So make sure that you have that imported. Um, we're going to create our my token test contract. We're going to say that it is uh, a test and you have to have this test.soul contract imported, very important. And that was a, a solidity library um, that was written actually before Foundry, uh, and it was kind of inherited um, with Foundry. It's it's excellent. So um, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. So it's a it's a great library to use. Okay, uh, so we are going to have our uh, my token, and we are going to uh, have a setup function. And so setup is recognized and run uh, before each test that you write. So if you have a hundred different tests, it's going to run a setup. It's going to run the first test. Whatever state gets changed um, is going to take place, and then it's going to run setup again. So if you have like an initial balance, or if you have um, 
anything that you need to run at the beginning uh, and in between each test, then this is what you'd want to put uh, in public. Oh, sorry, this is what you want to put in setup. So let's say our token, we're going to assign that to a new my token, and we're going to give it an initial supply of 100. And let's create our first function. And all this is going to say is this is just going to test that it's created the correct number of tokens um, when the contract has been deployed initially. So we'll call it test constructor mint. And we are going to do an assert here to make sure that the uh, balance of tokens that this address, meaning the deployer here, the person who deployed the smart contract, um, is 100. Cool. So that's it for this. This is just a simple test. Let's go ahead and try to run it. Um, we're going to make it more complicated. We're going to add some more things, but uh, just let's try to run it for what we have now. So we'll run forge test. Cool. And our test suites passed. So um, we do have a counter. So sorry about that. So counter.t.sol. Uh, this is something that we don't need. This was just created when we uh, ran Foundry, uh, when we ran the initial startup command, uh, when we ran forge init Foundry. So let's remove uh, counter.t.sol. We don't need that now. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just we don't need it, and it's kind of muddling up um, what we have here. So let's also delete counter.s.sol. And we're going to create our own scripts. We're going to create our own test file for container. Um, and we're going to have our own deployment scripts, and so we're going to get to all that um, in just a second. So all we want to be running right now is, so let's try to run that again, and it should be, um, oops, sorry, let's run forge test, and here we have just one test suite, um, which is what we expected, just one test suite and just one method. So it passed, um, and fairly simple, uh, but let's try to add uh, a little bit more and make it um, a little bit more uh, complicated. So let's test uh, the min function. So let's say, let's take a quick look at our my token again. We've got this min function. What does it do? Um, it takes in the amount of tokens that you'd like to mint and the address that you'd like them to go to. Um, and it enforces that uh, whatever you want to mint, it has to be less than one ether's worth of tokens. So uh, ether here is recognized as a word, so it's going to be equivalent to uh, 10 to the 18 way. Um, so if we're doing uh, some sort of uh, comparison here, we can either write it out fully uh, as in 10 to the 18th, or we can just say one ether uh, when we're doing these comparisons. So let's uh, create our test function. And remember that every test function starts here with test. If we don't include test here, if we just call this constructor mint and we try to run it, Foundry is not going to recognize that this is a test. And so it won't uh, run it when you run uh, the test command, when you run forge test. So we need to put that there. That's very important. We'll do the same one for uh, our next function. And we're going to call this one uh, mint one ether or below. So we want to try to see what happens if we mint uh, within the correct uh, parameters because the requirement is that it has to be less than one ether. So we also want this to be a fuzz test. Now, we could specify our own uh, parameter here. We could say we want to test it with uh, an exact amount. We could pass in 12 or half an ether or anything like that. Uh, but if we choose to do uh, a variable here where we're saying uh, uint, for example, uh, 256, amount to mint, uh, forge or foundry is going to help us out by fuzzing this test automatically. So rather than providing just one value, it's going to provide it with uh, a gazillion values. And they're going to be large, they're going to be small, they're going to be edge cases, and it's quite, quite helpful. Um, but we do need to kind of just kind of control it a little bit, and you'll see what I mean. So this is a public function, and we are going to say that we want to add token dot mint amount to mint and we want to mint this to our message dot sender uh, and we want to assert an equivalence here assert equals that the balance 
of whatever the deployer here, the message.sender, has is going to be equal to the amount to mint. So if the uh, if we try to mint, you know, half an ether's worth or 10 GUI, we want this amount to be the same. And that's what we we're checking. So let's go ahead and run it and let's see what happens. And remember, because we have uh, this variable here, uh, Foundry is going to automatically fuzz for us. So it's going to try with huge numbers, small numbers. It's going to try everything in between. And as you might be able to guess, it might run into a problem. Um, OK, so it's run into a problem. It encountered uh, an error. And it gives you the reason for the error. And it gives you a counterexample. So what failed? And so how can you try to replicate this? So it passed in an amount that looks like it's just larger than 1 ether. So 10 to the 18th uh, plus 1. And it failed, right? And it failed because in my token, we said we are requiring that it needs to be less than 1 ether's worth. So if you try to mint more than that, it's going to fail, right? So let's say that we enjoy this fuzzing process. We enjoy that Foundry is helping us out, and it's plugging in all these different values and um, it's really helping us with our tests. Uh, but we don't care about testing anything greater than one ether. Uh, we want to create these guardrails. We want to keep it within um, a certain amount, right? We don't want to bother testing greater than one ether. Uh, we want it to be kind of uh, restricted. So what we can do is we can say vm.assume. And you can get really creative and flexible here. So you can um, imagine any sort of parameter that you need. Uh, for your contract or your test, and you can specify it. So we're going to assume here that the amount to mint is uh, going to be less than or equal to uh, one ether. And what this will do is this will run the fuzz up until it gets to uh, the one ether. So it's going to stop. It's not going to bother trying to mess with uh, amounts uh, greater than one ether. So if we try to run it now, it should run successfully. Cool, and it does. Uh, don't worry about this warning here. That's not an issue at this time. Cool, so that kind of did exactly what we expect. But what if we want to test something uh, where it might fail? Uh, so what if we wanted to try to test minting above one ether? We'll do the same structure as we do up here. And all we're going to do here is we're going to assume here that we're setting the guardrails here. And the guardrails are, don't bother trying below one ether. We want you to try uh, above one ether. And we're going to have the same command here, token.mint, amount to mint, and deliver it to message.sender. And then we're going to check. We want to assert that whatever it tried to mint uh, did actually get um, delivered to whoever it was minting. That would be the message.sender and the amount to mint. So as you can guess, this is going to fail. But when we think of a failure in this case, we actually want it to fail. Uh, because if we try to mint anything larger than one ether's worth of tokens, we've defined here in mytoken.sol that we require the mint amount to be less than or equal to one ether. So anything larger should fail. So if we go ahead and run this, oops, sorry, let's run forge test. Uh, we get a failure. And we get an explanation of the failure. Uh, we see a revert and an error code. And we also see a counterexample. And the counterexample that's specified here is just over 1 ether. Remember that 1 ether is 10 to the 18th. And so this is just one way larger than 1 ether. So Foundry is trying all these different test cases. Uh, and it tries with this one. And it provides this as a counterexample. So this fails. Um, but again, this is actually expected, right? Uh, within the confines of our smart contract, we expect that it's going to fail. So what we can do in this case is we can call this a test fail case. So test fail. Um, and this is recognized by Foundry uh, as a specific type of test case. And so if we try to run forge test again, the test will pass because this always reverts if it's larger than one either. Now, if there was some weird scenario, for example, where uh, two ether, for example, uh, if that uh, succeeded, then the test case would fail. 
because Foundry's recognizing, hey, look, you're expecting that it's gonna fail, but there's actually a problem here because it does succeed at this point, right? So in our case, uh, everything passes uh, because it fails. Cool, so that wraps up our mytoken.test file. Let's go ahead and actually write our script in order to deploy our smart contracts. We're gonna deploy both the container and the my token. Remember we said we were gonna deploy them together. So that's exactly uh, what we'll do. So let's scroll down a little bit in the tutorial and let's head down all the way to deploy in Foundry with Solidity scripts. Now remember, we're doing everything in Solidity. We don't have any JavaScript. We don't have any other languages here. Everything we're doing is gonna be in Solidity. So we're gonna continue that trend. And let's head up one directory and let's head to our script folder. And let's go ahead and create a container.s.soul. So remember our scripts here, this is just a naming convention, but we're including the .s.soul to indicate that it is a script. So let's go ahead and go ahead and start editing it. So if we head in to container.s.soul, we'll go ahead and copy the import statements at the top and we'll write the rest of our contract ourselves. So you'll notice here that we're gonna import from the Forge standard script library. That's very important. You need to make sure that you have that imported. We're also gonna import my token and container. We're gonna be deploying them, so it makes sense that we need to have access to them. Um, so our script here, we can call it uh, whatever we'd like, but in this case, we'll name it something pretty logical. So we'll call it container deploy script is a script. And we're gonna have a run function that's gonna be public. And we're gonna define a private key here, which isn't stored in the contract, but instead it's actually gonna be stored in a .env file, which we will uh, access in uh, just one moment. And we're gonna access this with our vm.envuint. And we're just gonna make sure that it's named private underscore key in our .env file. Okay, so up until this point, we're just setting up our configuration for deployment. We haven't actually deployed anything yet. We are just getting things ready. We're importing things, we are getting our private key ready, but we are ready to start our deployment process at this time. We're just getting things ready, but we are ready to start our deployment process at this time. And because we're doing everything in the script, the way that you differentiate between your setup items and things you actually like to deploy on chain is by using the command vm.startbroadcast. And when we do this, we're gonna pass in the private key to indicate where we want the uh, deployment to come from, the account that we want to do the, the deploying. And anything that happens after start broadcast, this is actually gonna be deployed on chain. So what do we wanna do? We wanna create a new my token contract. We'll call it token. And we do need to provide the original um, uh, mint amount that we'd like uh, to be created. So we could say 500, we could say 1,000, let's say 1,000 here. Uh, we also wanna create a new container. And let's go ahead and say new container, which is going to have, it's gonna store the token that we just created. And let's say it can hold up to 500 of those. We're also gonna have a command here for vm.stop broadcast. And this is going to signal that our on-chain deployment is finished here, but we might have some additional items after here, uh, cleanup items or anything like that. Uh, your deployment script may be way more complicated than this. This is a simple example, um, but there is a lot that you can do. And so it's important that we have this sort of uh, structure within our script so that Foundry knows exactly what to deploy um, and what to put on chain. So let's go ahead and save this and let's return to terminal. Let's head back to the root directory here of your Foundry project and let's go ahead and create our .env file. Um, we need to specify, sorry, we need to specify a private key. And so go ahead and paste that in. Again, never share this information. And this one here is just for demonstration purposes. You don't need to worry about a verification key or an API key or anything like that, we won't be verifying anything. Cool. So everything is just about ready to go. Uh, we just need to go ahead and run our deployment command. And so in order to do that, we're gonna say forge script 
container dot actually let's navigate into our script folder uh, and we'll run forge script container dot s dot soul and we're also going to define here the contract that we want to run you might have multiple ones in the file but in this case we just have one and it's called container deploy script and we'll make sure there's no space or anything here we're going to include the flag broadcast to indicate that we do want to make a deployment we're also going to specify the flag with four v's and this is to make sure that our logging is quite verbose we'll be able to see any error messages as they come out we'll also add a flag for dash dash legacy and legacy uh, tells foundry to uh, ignore eip 1559 um, and submit the transaction as a legacy transaction. Now, all Moonbeam networks support EIP 1559. They have for quite some time now, uh, but there is a quirk with Foundry where uh, it thinks that Moonbeam does not support it. So if you don't include the legacy flag, uh, Foundry will just do a simulation. It won't actually deploy anything on chain. So make sure that you include this dash dash legacy flag for the time being. We're also going to specify the RPC URL that we want to use, where we want to make the deployment. And remember that within our TOML file, we defined a couple different endpoints. We defined the Moonbase and the Moonbeam one. So we're going to use Moonbase in this case. Oh, I'm sorry. The dash VVVVV uh, only needs one flag. So that should fix it. Cool, and the deployment is happening right now. The chain ID here is 1287, which is the chain ID of Moonbase Alpha. We also see some gas information, and we are gonna wait for the transaction confirmations. And our first contract was deployed. We can go ahead and open it up in Moonbase Alpha. And we can see that is the my token contract here. Uh, we can also see the information for the container contract once it's deployed. Cool. And the container contract was deployed as well. So we can pull that up here if we'd like. And just take a second to to load and here it is and that's it it's that easy uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial and hope you enjoyed this in-depth workshop and look at foundry stay tuned there's a lot more where this came from thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you in the next video